great to hear and get more information about that study. Um, um, we'll now turn to um, Dr. Nafisa Shoten uh, from the Africa CDC. Um, she is the lead of endemic and neglected tropical diseases in the Division of Disease Control and Provision, uh, Prevention in Africa CDC. Uh, it's great to, um, to have um, an episode now as a, a partner uh, in this effort and to have Africa CDC uh, engaged in um, uh, our effort to um, scale up hepatitis B birth dose vaccination. Um, Nafisa? Thank you, John. Thank you very much. Um, I hope you can hear me clearly. I do apologize. My connection is not very good today, but do let me know if I, you know, if, if, if um, my voice drops um, at any moment. Loud and clear now. Thank you. Okay, perfect. Great. Thank you. Hello, everyone. Uh, I'm Dr. Nafisa Chutan from the Division of Disease Control and Prevention at uh, the Africa Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, commonly called Africa CDC. Um, it is my honor and pleasure to give an overview of uh, the plan activities of Africa CDC um, as we start working in the field of viral hepatitis. Uh, slide, please. Thank you. So very briefly, just to give you an overview of what Africa CDC is and how we operate. So we are a specialized technical institution of the African Union established in 2017. Um, to provide strategic direction to promote um, public health practice within the 55 uh, African Union member states. And we operate through three levels, um, a secretariat based in Addis Ababa uh, and five uh, regional collaborating centers that are located in um, the five AU regions, North, South, East, West, and Central. And at country level, we operate through NPHI, centers of excellence and ministries of health. Last slide, please. So this is very briefly just also to give you an overview of the different divisions, you know, and some of the key areas that we work on. Um, and obviously several of the initiatives and programs that we have um, are cross-cutting. Uh, next slide, please. And here just to, again, highlight, uh, I'm based in the division of disease control and, sorry, just the previous one, very briefly. Lindsay? Yeah, thank you. Um, but I'm based in the Division of Disease Control here and Prevention that was only established in September 2020. And I'm leading the unit on endemic diseases and NTDs, as John mentioned, which includes hepatitis B, which is, I think, quite fitting since Hep B is an endemic disease that has been neglected for too long uh, on the continent. Uh, slide, please. So coming uh, more concretely to Africa CDC activities in the field of viral hepatitis, we have a partnership with the Korean International Corporation Agency uh, for a four-year program, which will focus broadly on data collection, um, the development of strategies and technical documents, um, followed by implementation of uh, surveillance systems in uh, five member states, one per region. Uh, slide, please. More specifically, um, the activities surrounding introduction of uh, birth dose vaccine. So as several of you know, uh, the previous presenters have mentioned in their uh, earlier presentations, one of the issues identified you know, to explain the reluctance of some countries to introduce the birth dose vaccine has been the lack of evidence to support uh, the said uh, vaccine. Um, and in the short to medium term, we intend to conduct zero surveys on Hep B in five mem member states. Um, and we hope to use historical samples that are representative of, of the general population, including different age groups. Um, and this testing will provide us with evidence of, you know, prevalence of Hep B in young children as well as uh, women. And where Hep B vaccine has not uh, yet been, uh, Hep B birth dose vaccine has not uh, been introduced, this information will provide us with baseline data that can be used to compare prevalence um, in similar age groups after introduction of um, the birth dose vaccine. And um, also, you know, the data that uh, is generated for one country can also be used to support um, introduction of uh, heavy birth dose vaccine in neighboring uh, countries. Uh, on the longer term, uh, we, uh, the project will involve the establishment of a surveillance system in uh, those five member states, which will allow them to monitor and evaluate the vaccination programs, but also provide evidence of um, reduction of disease burden after the introduction of uh, the birth dose vaccine. Uh, slide, please. 
So some of the other activities that we have planned will indirectly support, um, you know, introduction of both dose vaccine. Uh, one of them is um, the situational assessment and analysis in all 55 member states that will improve accessibility, we hope, to national plans uh, within uh, uh, that are already available at you know, um, national level and to assess, assess which countries are more likely ready for introduction of uh, both dose vaccine. Um, guidelines, for example, will support introduction of um, we definitely support introduction of the both dose vaccine as part of the elimination strategy. Um, and we will use data collected in the serial survey to support this recommendation. So it will carry a bit of weight as it will be evidence uh, driven. And obviously when we talk about capacity building, we will be supporting countries to continue regular uh, surveillance activities to assess the impact of introduction of uh, the both dose vaccine. Uh, slide please. Thank you. So there are some potential activities that we're thinking about. And obviously, you know, for the many different presentations that I've heard today, there are even more ideas coming up um, that are beyond the scope of the current uh, grant that we have uh, from COICA, but that, you know, we, we are thinking about. And, and some of those uh, include um, genetic studies where, you know, where the capacity that has currently been built on the continent in terms of sequencing capacity, perhaps even just in terms of RT-PCR capacity uh, during the COVID-19 pandemic can be leveraged um, to, ca to characterize circulating um, hep B strains, including genotyping and perhaps even identifying any va uh, vaccine escape variants. And this is an initiative that the Pathogen Genomics Institute at Africa CDC can definitely help with. And we're also looking at using the community healthcare uh, community healthcare workers program within uh, the unit of universal healthcare coverage at Africa CDC to raise awareness of the vaccine in the community and also uh, in expectant women so that they can request it. Next slide. I think that's the final slide. Thank you. Uh, thank you again, John, for the opportunity to, to present, and I hope that I can share some concrete data uh, in the future. And if there are any questions, please feel free to ask them after the session here, or you can also contact me on the email address that is shared uh, in the presentation.